Okay, looks like we can get started. Welcome everybody. Welcome to how to set up social networks for a successful job search. My name is Maggie. I am a librarian here with the Plano Public Library. I've been an avid social media user since the mid aughts and a social media team lead. So I'm excited to talk about the subject with you all today. I will be leading this class while Jennifer, our chat facilitator, is available to answer questions, interject when necessary throughout the class. Before we begin, I need to let you know that we have some ground rules set up. You will be muted during this class and we have your video blocked. You will only see my screen. At the top of your screen, you can find the option to exit full screen if you need to get to other things on your computer. You are welcome to ask questions in the chat box. You'll see an icon at the bottom of your screen that says chat. Click on that and it will open up the chat box. Jennifer may answer your question in the chat box or she might hold the question to the end. If it's a pressing question, she might interject. Chat is set to be seen by me and Jennifer only. Please note that any inappropriate comments will cause your immediate removal from the class. This class will not teach you how to use the internet or how to set up an email account or teach basic computer skills. However, all those skills are super important and the library has resources for you to learn. All right. The goal for today's class is to guide you on how to use or not use online social networking during the job search process and beyond. Let's get going. The plan for today's class is this. I will present a few reasons why you should care about social media during the job search process. Then we will review a few options you have with maintaining social media accounts along with a deeper dive into those options, including LinkedIn. And then we will wrap up highlighting a few library resources. Sound good? Great. To start, I want to review a few keywords I will frequently use throughout this presentation. Social media platforms or networks, these are really two interchangeable terms, are websites dedicated to connecting with others and sharing your life. Social networks that I will highlight today may include Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and various blogging sites. A handle is an account name on Instagram and Twitter. Handles are unique usernames, meaning no one else can have it. You could use your name, nickname, or whatever is available. But pro tip for the job search success, Choose something that is more on the professional side, like you would with an email address. Your profile is your account, your page, all that you post. The library has profiles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So make sure to follow us. And speaking of following, a follower is an account that is able to see your posts. Some privacy settings can select whether followers have to ask for your permission first. More on that in a little bit. A like is to approve, endorse, support a post by either hitting that like button on Facebook or tapping the heart icon on Twitter and Instagram. It is the most common form of engaging with others on social media sites. A post. A post can be a photo, a video, an opinion, an update on your life that you add to your social media site. The library posts story time videos Monday through Friday on Facebook and will post behind the scenes photos on Instagram. On Twitter, posts are more commonly known as tweets. A feed is a compilation of posts from those you follow. This is where we scroll and scroll and scroll to get updates from the news, our friends and family members. 
It is the main path for engaging with others. Sharing is when you repost, retweet other users' content onto your profile through private message or by copying a link to share with others in an email or text. A story is a tool on Facebook and Instagram that's relatively new. They are posts that are typically listed in a unique feed at the top of the page and only last for 24 hours. Then they are automatically deleted. But beware, other users who watch your stories can screenshot or share or repost parts of your stories. So while it seems like it would be okay to post something a little controversial in your story, it can live past 24 hours. A DM refers to direct messages. Messages can be sent between two users, but again, privacy settings may determine whether the two users need to follow one another before messages can be sent. And hashtags. Hashtags are searchable terms in a post that helps connect to other content on the social media platform. Hashtags use the pound sign with text all together, no spaces. For an example, at the bottom of our slide here, hashtag Plano Public Library for a post about this class will link to any post by and about the library using the same hashtag. So let's start with a question. Why should you care about your presence online? Well, your digital presence tells a lot about you in this digital age. I would suggest doing a Google search of your name to see what comes up. Make a note of your digital footprint because that is what potential employers are doing. According to this quote from a NOLO article, real quick, NOLO is a publisher of legal books and manuals on a variety of legal subjects, and the library has these for you to check out. But back to that quote, can you believe it? Close to 70% of employers are going to do a search for you and your social media presence. This could be problematic during a job search, or it could be helpful. And strangely enough, if you don't have a social media presence, there might be questions as to whether you truly are a person or not. What are you trying to hide by not being on social media in this digital age? And does your job require it? If you are looking for a job that is technological in any way, or are in marketing, communication, or even sales, it is important to show that you have the skills to do that job, or at least the technological understanding. So many jobs these days use computers and technology, so why not show that, hey, I can use a computer, I have a social media presence, I know this stuff. So here are a few options of what you can do to be present online and have it work for you during your job search. Number one, stay social, but lock it down. This is a slight presence on social media. Users may be able to see you, but definitely not a lot about you. The levels of privacy lockdowns do differentiate based on social media sites. More on that coming soon in this presentation. Number two, stay social, but clean it up. A medium presence, meaning you have a public profile, but you have scrubbed it down and are proactive about keeping it void of controversial posts, photos, or topics. Anything that could be problematic to employers. Or number three, you can stay social and use it to market yourself during the job search. This is a high presence online. Now, let's dig deeper into each of these three options. So let's start with that option number one, lock it down. Each of the social media platforms have in place privacy options, 
that can help limit who can see your account and to what extent. If you are asking how right about now, I'm going to show you. First, we have Twitter. FYI, I have included the date stamp for when I took these screenshots. Social media websites often update the look of their site. Links will move around, but the language often stays the same. So Twitter has a button to select whether you want to be private or not. Private on Twitter means that you have to approve any follower before they can see your feed of tweets. Additionally, you can select who can send you direct messages, DMs. The next two slides are regarding Facebook. Facebook has a few tools to help understand and implement privacy options. The privacy checkup tool are very helpful in understanding what all the different privacy options mean for you and what will work for you. And then the privacy settings here lets you edit a variety of privacy options, such as who can find you, who can make a comment on your posts, and more importantly, who can share your posts, spread those posts that you might not want being spread. Now, Instagram is similar to Twitter with a simple toggle on and off option to select whether you want a private or public account. Public accounts mean anyone, anywhere can see your posts, while private accounts require you to approve followers who will then be able to see your posts. Since Instagram is a more app-based social network, I am showing screenshots from an iPhone. It might look a little different, but that little hamburger menu option, which is that three horizontal stacked line in the first screenshot, is pretty much a safe bet to tap on to find more information regarding settings on any app or website. If you are into vlogging, which is video blogging, where you create videos about your life, your experiences, your reactions to movies, TV, all that fun stuff, then you probably are posting these videos to YouTube. If you are creating content, you could select whether the video is private or public, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. Whereas if you watch, subscribe, and save certain playlists, you can determine whether to make that information public or private. And let's talk about TikTok real quick. TikTok is the most popular app at the moment. There are fun short videos that often includes lip syncing, dancing. Sure, it is fun to join in on challenges, but make sure to keep in mind whether you want to post a video or not and how far you'd like that video to be spread. Now, on to option two. You can certainly stay social and keep your social networks open and findable, but it might be a really good idea to go in and clean it up. Remember that quote from Nello? References to drugs, alcohol, violence, etc. play into a potential employer's decision. So a, a good recommendation is to take a deep dive into your social media accounts. Take a second look at all those photos or tweets with a more professional filter. Think of the possible interpretations of a post you made 10 years ago. If it could be problematic, it is best to delete it. And here are a few headlines. The takeaway, social media can do some damage. So why not be proactive? Don't let your social media take you down. And as you move forward, or as you go through the history of your accounts cleaning it up, here are some questions to ask yourself from a Forbes article. I really like number three and number seven. 
Will I offend someone? If so, am I okay with that? Am I okay with anyone seeing this? Parents, friends, family, customers, bosses, coworkers, etc. Keep in mind all those in your life who could be impacted by your posts. Option number three. The third option is to use your social media to your advantage in the most marketable way possible. Of course, this would involve a thorough cleanup as with option two. Then a really tight focus on calculated steps to market yourself. So first things first, the profile picture. A profile picture is the first identifying tool searchers have. You would want to make the best first impression possible, right? Think of an interview, how you intentionally pick out an outfit and groom to present yourself in the best possible manner. This is how you can treat your profile picture. Go with a quality photo, preferably a solo picture, so we can identify who you are, that is clear, not blurry, or pixelated. As you market yourself, again, you wanna put your best foot forward. But what does that mean? It means stick to positivity. Keep those grumblings to a minimum. While your social media accounts are yours and you should express yourself however you would like, always keep in mind the various ways a post can be interpreted, especially any big posts. Be clear with their, your intentions. Keep those complaints and arguments between one another to a minimum. If you are going to market yourself, you go ahead and market yourself. Show off what you've done, your experiences, your interests, your works of art. Show off your hobbies. Most employers are seeking well-rounded and dynamic team members. So again, show that off. And not only show yourself off, but show your authentic self. Potential employers can and will use your social networks to determine whether you are telling the truth on your resume, application, and interview. But as you show yourself off, don't run yourself ragged. Focus on showing and connecting on maybe one or two sites. You could choose Facebook and Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, YouTube and Twitter, mix and match. But what about blogging or having your own personal website to highlight you and your skills? A blog could certainly be a useful tool if you have skills or products that you can show off, whether that is writing, art, cooking, photography, reviews, and more. If you are a teacher, you could post sample lesson plans. The internet is your oyster. Be creative. Think outside the box. But blogging and maintaining a website might take money and definitely takes work and upkeep. You must be willing to update it as much as you can. The concept of networking can extend into the digital world. What can you do? Well, you certainly don't have to take large steps into networking. Start small. Comment on a post. Read and review and learn by going through threads to see what discussions are going on. On Twitter, you could follow organizations related to your field of choice or those businesses that you would like to work for in order to see what is going on in that field or with that business. You can comment on tweets, retweet, and just engage with those businesses. On Facebook, you can follow organizations, join groups, 
and engage with others. The image on this slide is a screenshot of the various categories of groups on Facebook. There are so many groups to fit your need. And one moment on Meetup. It's a really cool site designed for meeting people through shared interests, such as hobbies. The site has become a tool to meet people. Job focused groups are currently very tech heavy at the moment, but networking can bring to, excuse me, I gotta cough one moment. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. And Meetup, Meetup is a really cool site designed for meeting people through those shared interests, like I was saying. And it's really focused on tech jobs at the moment, but networking can happen during any hobby. So if you like to cook or try out restaurants, you can join a local meetup group to do that. And you never know who you're gonna meet and what those new connections might bring. So I'm sure you've heard of LinkedIn. If not, it is the professional social media network. Should you join LinkedIn? The short answer is probably. The long answer is yes. And it will be necessary to keep your profile updated with correct and current information. LinkedIn can be a valuable tool for not only finding jobs, but also to put yourself out there to potential employers who use the site to find candidates. So what should you include in on your LinkedIn profile? It isn't meant to replace your resume. So please don't do a data dump on your profile. As previously mentioned, a profile picture is a super important reflection of you and who you are. As LinkedIn is the site for professionals to connect, select your most professional photo of you. That's neither blurry, pixelated, or you in a large crowd. A profile summary is important to get to know you with a brief and concise bio. Think of it as your two to three sentence elevator pitch. Who are you? What can you bring? What are you passionate about? Not only will this help you improve your LinkedIn profile, but this can be your elevator pitch whenever you need to pull it out. An elevator pitch is one of the most helpful tools you can have in your tool belt during the job search process. For background information, definitely add that. Add your most jo recent job experiences, maybe the past two to three jobs or jobs within the past five to 10 years. You don't have to add those jobs in your teenage years if they're not relevant to what you're doing in your adult career. Do add a few bullet points of accomplishments, accolades, your experiences, projects, leadership positions, what you did in that role to give in an idea of what you can do at the job that might parlay well into other jobs. Education is also valuable to add because you can connect with fellow alumna and alumni. You never know who could be a networking tool. That buddy friend from high school or your friend from college, they might help you get that job in your next step in life. Adding skills is important for your LinkedIn profile. Skills are like hashtags on this site, meaning they are searchable. Employers can select certain skills to bring up profiles that might work for their position or jobs that, and they could pop up for you based on the skills you choose, and then you could apply for those jobs. As a librarian, LinkedIn offered these possible skills based on my work experience. 
if I were to select archives as one of my skills, I would receive notices for archival jobs or potential employers who are looking for people with archiving skills could see my profile in their search for candidates. Very, very, very important to do when you set up your LinkedIn account. Select those skills. Continuing education, certificates, awards, publications, anything small or large that you have, you can help highlight how you are improving yourself, joining in and being recognized for efforts will show how great of an employee you can be to a potential employer. LinkedIn offers a premium account with a fee. Do you need a premium account? Probably not as a job searcher. Premium gets you access to learning content, but the library has that for you. Employers might have a premium account in order to learn more about candidates. The one perk with premium is that you would be able to see who has viewed your profile that you could then use to your advantage. But you got to weigh whether that is a pro, enough of a pro to select that premium account. You might know that LinkedIn and Linda are now part of one company. So any course, let's get that plane. Any course that you take on lynda.com can be added to your LinkedIn profile to show that, hey, I'm improving my skills. Look at these classes I've taken. You can access Linda content with your library card on the library's website. As the video is showing, you will go to planolibrary.org, click on learn, research and learn, and then find Linda under the H through N header. Then you'll get to the login page for Linda and you'll log in with your library card. Once you're in, Linda has lots of courses from 30 minutes long to eight hour long learning paths. You can earn certificates for each course. There are all, all sorts of courses on leadership, time management, courses for teachers and instructors, business administrators, very, very tech heavy. So if you would like to improve on any tech skills from Microsoft, and all that, this is a valuable tool for you that is free with your library card. Additionally, the library has a blog where you can find more information on our classes and programs. This is planolibrarylearns.org. FYI, there should be a blog post coming soon in the next few days on this class and the content I have shared along with links to resources. In the library, we are here for you and your job search process with databases, resources, and upcoming classes. I wanna highlight that last one Book a librarian. This is one on one assistance with a librarian for about a 30 minute session where you can review a site, a resource that you want to dig a little bit deeper in. We cannot review resumes, but tutor.com will. And we are offering a class on July 14th focused on resume design. So if you are in the market to update your resume and get some ideas, check out that class. So that is what I have to share with you all today. I hope it's been helpful. Jennifer, do we have any questions in the chat that we could answer at this time? Um, we did have one question. Let me find that here. Um, and he's, he's asking, nowadays, executives do not believe social media as they find it as biased opinion or false statement. How can we address this issue? Um, 
Hmm. <laughs> so um, I, I, I'm not quite sure if this falls within the scope of our um, of what we're doing right now, but I have been looking at articles that talk about how they want the um, CEOs of companies to actually be on social media. So I, I don't know that that's really applicable here because I feel like most companies um, want their CEOs and certainly their marketing team involved in social media and interacting because most of their customers um, interact on social media. A very good point. And like I was saying with that option too, if you are uncomfortable being on social media with uh, and getting into possible controversial areas, you, you can have that presence, but scale it back. You don't have to be deeply involved with and answering and responding to every possible interaction that comes up. You have to be diligent and focused on how you are putting yourself out there and what sort of presence you are creating with your social media accounts. Is there any other questions that we can maybe address? I didn't have any other questions. I was wondering if you were going to tell them about Ask a Librarian or Book a Librarian. Yeah, let's see on this previous slide, the Book a Librarian page, you'll get to it on the planolibrary.org. This is again, the one-on-one -on -one assistance. If you would like that one-on-one -on -one assistance, we can do 30 minute sessions where we can help you create a social media account if you would if that's something you are interested in. Um, if you are needing help exploring some library databases such as Ferguson's Career or Learning Express Library, we can help you with Lynda. We love lynda.com. We use Lynda all the time in the library, so we'd be certainly, we would certainly be apt to helping you. While the library is still closed, for general use, we've been doing a lot more virtual book of librarians where we can do a Zoom meeting or a Skype meeting, whatever is your preference, or we'll call you and try to walk you through any assistance that way. We have um, two more questions. Um, let's see. So I don't think I have anything to be concerned about in social media, but you talked about 10 years back. How do you do that? Well, it's if you've been a social media user for, let's see, Facebook has been around since roughly what, mid, mid aughts, 2004, 2006. So if you were an early joiner to social media sites, MySpace user, even though I think most MySpace data is now gone from the internet, but you might want to check on that. It is important to really go back into your profile, still see if they're still active. And if they are still active, what is posted there? Could that impact what you are trying to do now? As for the jobs with LinkedIn, that was the general advice that I saw is that 10 years is a good frame of frame of reference to determine whether a job would be useful in posting on LinkedIn. They don't want, it's not a site to data dump your resume, it's to highlight your skills, what you could be doing, and what jobs you are searching for in your field to advance yourself in that field. Okay, and we have another question. Um, are the laptops at the library or do you bring your own? Laptops? Basically, they're asking if we have laptops at the library. Oh, okay. No, not, no, we do not at this time. But that's an interesting question. Anything else that we could assist with at this time? I believe that is all the questions we have at this point. Thank you very much, Jennifer, and thank you everyone for attending. I hope you have enjoyed this class. And again, we'll see you at another virtual class. Have a wonderful afternoon and a restful time.